I trust you had a wonderful Christmas celebration and happy to be stepping into a new year. Yes, 2020 holds loads of excitement. It's a clean slate for everyone so we can all start over again and shake off those shackles that held us down in 2019. But there are no errors here, only creativity. And we'll be giving you more this year. Welcome to the program. I'm Melinda Kinlami. Details will be coming your way in a moment. Do stay with us. To poison a nation, poison its stories. A demoralized nation tells demoralized stories to itself. The sun will shine on those who stand before it shines on those who kneel under them. and lovers of art from different walks of life were on hand to appreciate the works of art done by a veteran artist in Benin, the Edo State Capital. The National Gallery of Art has spotted an unsung hero in the heart of Benin City, Edo State, and is showing off his works. A reminder of the feat Joseph Ibinovia, a local carver at the time, accomplished when he accepted the challenge of producing a replica of the 1977 Queen Idia Mosque, which became the emblem of the Festival for Arts and Culture. Years after, his story has been anything but glam. First and foremost, the artist involved is a great achiever. His story is all over the world, not just Nigeria, not just Edo, not just Benin. Uh, the man who rescued Nigeria when our former colonial master refused to recognize us that our own ingenuity was what produced that work. And to prove them wrong, this man replicated the same act and produced the same thing that, you know, the world rated as you know, almost better than even the original. This exhibition is unique. Unique in the sense that he is the first informally trained artist to be packaged in this form by NGA. And number two, for what he is known for, for what he did for Nigeria, rescuing Nigeria from that. And again, these works that you see are not in one domain. They are scattered here and there. We travel to Oka, Nri, Nanka, combining what we got from there with what we got from some of his patrons in Benin. Most of the collection here is from Nri, where Baba Alpha spent almost five years in my, in my temple to do some of this artwork. So most of the edition today you see here is from my own collection. The man is a great man. A variety of the veteran artists' works, mostly in photo stories, are displaced in this solo exhibition dubbed Festac 77, unmasking this unsung hero. Save for this mind-blowing bed, elaborately designed, which bears the hallmarks of the mystery of his arts. It took him a few years to put this together. In 1999, I started this bed. So this bed is a super royal bed of life. So I don't work on it anyhow. I don't work on it anyhow. Uh, I must stick reason before I start working on it. 
visualize, visualize before I start working on it. So I know what to, how I will do everything, all the pattern and so on and so forth. So that is it. Well, the quality of craftsmanship, as you can see, is very uh, high. And uh, it, it attests to uh, its ability to reproduce the first act mask. The first act mask really is an epitome of craftsmanship, you know, discipline, as at the time it was done. So to consider him eligible and be nominated to reproduce such a delicate work of high quality, you can see in what he has done as well. So it was not a fluke. So this bird is amazing. It's really amazing and uh, it's a masterpiece. One of those things we are reputed for is art and culture. In nature fact, the gentleman deserves a lot of respect. He deserves Ecomia, particularly for the first appearance when he produced the, uh, the first half face. Titled Idia Niyesige. I remember in 1977, that was what we were looking for for the first act. We went to Britain to lease the one they have there, and they gave us two million to rent it at then, 40 years ago. But we declined. That was how we came back to this man. The late Rabbi Mokbai influenced on him to produce or replicate a similar one, which he did. And ever since, people struggled to see him, to know him. And you have seen his artwork. Things like this should be encouraged. This is a thing the federal government should cherish. His work, which is a, the replica of the first stack mask, is quite important because uh, it, it was a, uh, the replica we used uh, to stand in for the original uh, during the first stack 77. And ever since then, people have not really bothered to know who uh, made that work. And I think it's uh, quite apt you know, to celebrate his work. Now that art has come to the fore, it's good for, and also for our art history. We should know people put a face and experience to those who have, you know, been able to excel and done us proud. In spite of his landmark achievements in reproducing the first art mask copy, the artist has not been having a ball. History has almost forgotten the pivotal role he played after the original Queen Idia mask and other artifacts were looted from the palace of the Oba of Benin in 1897. <laughs> And this is a man you might think is not educated in the four walls of schooling, but the African way has continued to prove that we have our own education. We have our own way of training on our own people. And this man, despite his age, despite his financial challenges, he has continued to mentor young, willing and desirable talents. Things like this should be encouraged. This is a thing the federal government should cherish. In fact, when I saw him now, the way he looks, the gentleman has no time for himself. He can't even be sure what he wear tomorrow. A man like this should be careful. These are things that will make our antifacts, our antics, to remain and they will never die. With this exhibition, the NGA intends to dust off this artist's page in art history. For those wondering what the fuss is all about, more details about his art and accomplishments have been put in a book.
labor of our heroes will never be in vain. And in this season of love, we can do so much to shed some good cheer. Just the way you do with the works of art you send in every week. And these are the works of art that made the cut for this week. Let's begin with Royal Diadem's artwork called Superwoman. Here he captures the wife of the Vice President, Mrs. Dolapo Shibajo, with pencil on glossy cardboard. Then prayer is a gouache on chipboard work done by Tunde. This oil on canvas portrait painting is done by Columbus. He calls it Mama Africa, don't worry. Unduka has the flutist as a watercolor on paperwork. Another watercolor work is done by David. He calls this one the Emir's God. The making of beauty is Dele's oil on canvas work. Finally, this charcoal and graphite on pencil paperwork is a series Julius calls In Search of Peace 1. And those are the works of art you sent in this week. We do encourage you to keep them coming. And don't forget, put the relevant information beside that image. Coming up on the program, we go further south to enjoy another exhibition. And you won't want to miss that one in a moment. Stay with us. 